You're listening to the Index Investing Show. This is America's only weekly program focused on the important stock and bond indexes and the financial products that track them. And now presenting your host, Ron DeLegge. Ron DeLegge. Coming up on today's program, do you have a bear market plan? I'm going to give you a four-step plan. If you don't, even if you do, we're going to help you be ready for what's ahead. Also coming up, ETFs that inverse the market or short are jumping to life. We're going to give you a report all about that. And also, we've got some trivia on today's program. If you'd like to join us uh, to talk about your portfolio, you want to talk about the stock market drubbing that we've seen here since October or a particular strategy, ETF, mutual fund, we can do that. Again, 844-305-7800. That's the number. Give us your first name along with your city. You can also tweet the program live at Index Show. We'll check the Twitter feed coming up a little bit later. But at Index Show is where you can tweet the program live and find us uh, on Twitter. Um, so taking a look at market performance, a continuation of the down trend in stocks. We saw the S&P 500 declining almost one and a half percent on the week, pushing the the uh, stock market in here in the U.S. Uh, further into negative for the month of December. Investors are fearful. We know that uh, the CNN Fear and Greed Index, which tells us what market emotion is right now, what market sentiment is, what the market mood is. And right now we're at eight. That's extreme fear. 100 is extreme greed. Zero is extreme fear. Right now we're at eight. So what does that tell you? Stock market volatility is up. And not all has been bad for investors and traders. We're going to tell you a little bit later about ETFs that are inverse. In other words, they're designed to go up when stock prices fall. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine making money when market prices decline? See, you don't have to be just a mere observer. I mean, you can be if you want to be. But this is what we talk about when we talk about being strategic about your investments. We talk about your non-core investment portfolio. That's the setting for being strategic. That's the container. That's the correct context. And so we're going to get you caught up on what's happening with some of these inverse ETFs because they have been jumping to life. Stay tuned for that. So in terms of what's worrying the market, I mean, take a pick, take your pick. You've got soft economic data in Europe. You've got uh, the U.S. trade debate, not debate, but difference with the China that continues to be. Uh, something that weighs on the market. Then you've got the a real possibility of a shutdown with the U.S. government and not being able to agree on uh, whether to build a wall or start a wall between uh, Mexico, the Mexico-U.S. border. So that is going to add more to the negative sentiment if that comes about, and it looks like it will. And so these are some of the things weighing on the market. When it rains, it pours. And so these are some of the things that uh, that are driving the market's mood. Now, we've seen volatility shoot high higher over the past uh, over the past several uh, weeks and months. The VIX, which uh, which tracks volatility in the S&P 500. If you take a look at its performance here over the past three months, my goodness, it's up almost 75 percent. So and it's stay it has stayed stubbornly high that's another difference that we've seen this time around with vix versus previous corrections those previous corrections vix jumped and then fell back to its uh you know low low levels vix in terms of volatility has remained stubbornly high since the start of october it's had a obviously vix uh, jumps all over the place but it has stayed stubbornly uh, above 30 percent 
So now we're up 75% in terms of stock market volatility. Again, uh, that just shows you how edgy, how jumpy this particular market has been. Now, what about you? What about your investment portfolio? You know, every market, every bear market begins the exact same way. You want to know how? Every bear market begins in the same exact way. It begins with a market correction. And right now, that's where we're at. We're, we're in just a market correction. This is not yet a full-blown uh, bear market for the broader uh, stock market here in the U.S. Now, as far as certain specific categories within the stock market, we are seeing uh, certain areas that are already in a bear market. For example, small caps. Glad I mentioned small caps because the small cap effect, which I talked about several weeks ago, begins in mid-December. And the small cap effect goes all the way back to the early 40s. There was an investment banker by the name of Sidney Watchtell, and he wrote a, a, a piece, a research piece, observing seasonal movements in stock prices and he noticed that small cap stocks had the tendency to outperform large company stocks beginning in mid-December, running all the way into the new year. And he found that it happened more often than not. If we take a look at the small cap effect from 1987 to 2012, that 25-year period, we see small caps, by and large, most of the time outperformed large caps. They gained six, just a little over 6% compared to just a gain of about 3.5% for large caps. So pretty, pretty decent outperformance by small caps. Well, so far this year, uh, it's still early for the small cap effect because we're right in mid-December, so it hasn't really played out in, in full just yet. But Thus far, we've got small caps already in a bear market here in 2018, and they have been underperforming. They have been lagging larger company stocks over the past several months. The small cap effect, while its longer term record is good, it has not done well as an indicator over the past couple of years. In fact, it failed last year. It failed the previous year. And it looks like it's going to fail again this year. So three years, three consecutive years of failure for the small cap effect. It looks like that's uh, the current trend. Now, m lest I remind you, it, it did have a four-year span of consecutive uh, wins. So small caps, in other words, outperformed large caps for four consecutive years. That was from 2011 to 2015. But since then, the small cap effect, in other words, small caps outperforming large caps, has not come to fruition. This particular seasonal trend has not played out. And I don't think it's going to play out, especially if we see uh, we're seeing right now in terms of stock market action to the downside, not a good place uh, for small caps, which tend to be usually hit a lot harder than those larger, more established companies. 844-305-7800 is the number. We're here. Uh, on today's program, I've got some trivia for you. I'm going to throw it out there. How much did the S&P 500 fall during the last bear market? Is the answer A, 26%, B, 38%, or is it C, 43%? What is the correct answer? How much did the S&P 500 fall during the last bear market? If you know the answer to that question, 844-305-7800 is the number. Give us your first name along with your city. You can also tweet the answer to at index show. And uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the trivia winner will get when we come back. You're listening to the Index Investing Show with Ron DeLegge. Go to IndexShow.com to enroll in Ron's online classes for investors. Learn how to grow and protect your money. Hi, 
Okay, we're going to talk about uh, some of the inverse performing ETFs that have jumped to life. Uh, that's coming up. Also, your four-step bear market plan. Do you even have a bear market plan? As I said before, this is still just a market correction. And I see a lot of folks that are already almost ready to jump out a window if they haven't yet done that. And we're just in a market correction. Can you imagine once we start really getting into double-digit losses that are deep? what people are going to do. What kind of crazy are people going to do with their retirement assets, with their retirement money? And you see, this is the problem when you build an investment portfolio that's one-dimensional. When you construct an investment portfolio that's built for only one kind of market, a market that goes up. And that's probably describes that probably describes the vast majority of the investing public. And even financial advisor built portfolios which on the on the whole tend to be very one dimensional uh so what we're trying to help you understand is the need to have a multi dimensional investment portfolio in other words a portfolio that can perform and help you grow and progress in any kind of climate even a difficult climate now of course you may not grow as fast as you'd like in a bear market or in a, a market that's in a correction mode or a market that's neutral. You may not grow as fast, but nevertheless, you want to at least be moving forward. You want to you wanna have uh, your, your assets not just growing, but also protected. And so this is what's, what we're going to talk about on today's sh show, helping you have a bear market plan. In the previous uh episode if you missed our our show last week we talked about is it time to sell and that was a pretty uh, popular uh episode and if you missed it you could pick it up on our podcast it's available at indexshow.com you can also listen to it at iTunes YouTube Google Play and you can find it there i encourage you to listen to that particular episode is it time to sell so on last week's uh, program, also, I forgot to mention, we did some trivia. We asked the question, which collectible toy uh, became a hit in the 1990s? Was it Beanie Babies, Tickle Me Elbow, uh, Elmo, Pogs, or Pokemon cards? And the answer was Beanie Babies. And we got an email from Dan... Dan uh, answered that question accurately, and he win, won a copy of um, my book, Gents With No Sense, A Closer Look at Wall Street. It's customers, financial regulators, and the media. So, Dan, good job on uh, answering that question correctly. You'll get a signed copy of Gents With No Sense, and that's going to be the, what the winner of today's trivia gets. Again, a signed copy of Gents With No Sense. It is, by the way, the bear market edition. And uh, the question again for today's trivia, how much did the S&P 500 fall during the last bear market? Was it 26%? Was it 38%? Or was it 43%? Think about that. It's been 10 years since we've had a bear market. So how much did the S&P 500 fall? If you know the answer, 844-305. 7800 that's the number you can also tweet the answer at index show that's my twitter handle or email me ron at indexshow.com so taking a look at uh, some industry sector performance because i think industry sectors if anything also offer us a glimpse of the market's mood and what's going on and i want to focus on some of the largest industry sectors I want to focus on technology, financials, and healthcare, and see what the heck is going on with S&P 500 industry sectors, because it gives us a real understanding of what the market climate is and has become. So if we take a look at uh, since the beginning of 2018, and I think it's very important because this will help you have some perspective. If we take a look at the performance since October you would think that, my gosh, the world is just about over. Everything is ended. 
hang up the cleats and retire. But that's really not the case if we look at it on a bigger scale. If we look since the beginning of 2018, we're still up. Uh, we've got a couple of industry sectors that are in positive territory. Technology up almost 2% since the start of the year. That's ticker symbol XLK. We've got uh, healthcare stocks, XLV, like Victor, up almost 9% since the start of the year. And we've also got another uh, sector, which is very large, financials, XLF. That one is down 12%. So, so we see there that uh, banks, financial stocks have been very weak. We, we have seen uh, a number of, of forces and factors influencing that performance. Uh, of course, one of those being uh, the rising interest rate environment, I think, has certainly put a damper. Also, um, some concerns about whether profitability in the financial sector will will be good uh, come 2019. So that's a concern. One other sector that I want to mention, actually two, are consumer staples and utilities. Those two sectors are what we call defensive industry sectors. So they are more uh, resilient during market corrections as well as bear markets. And certainly if you want to play defense, which is not a bad thing to do in a market like this, that, uh, that those two sectors, I would say, are areas that you should be looking at. XLU tracks utilities. XLU is ahead by 10.5% since the start of the year. XLP tracks consumer staples. It's down a little bit since the start of the year, down about two and a quarter percent. But nevertheless, a lot, down a lot less than some of these other sectors like financials. And we may even see consumer staples perk up if, uh, if the rest of the stock market uh, begins to to the Index Investing Show, I'm your host, Rhonda Leggy. And how is your investment portfolio doing so far? How has it done so far this year? Have you even looked at it? And I know many of you have not looked at it. The thing here to think about is your investment portfolio is how much or what have you done to protect your retirement assets? Are you still fully invested? See, what I teach in my online classes is is really a rigorous approach towards investment management. It's not just about building an investment portfolio on the right foundation, but it's also about growing that money. Moreover, it's also about protecting that money. And especially as you get closer to retirement or head into retirement, it's all the more crucial to protect some of your assets. In other words, to have a margin of safety within your portfolio. So uh, this is a very important exercise. If you have not yet enrolled in my online classes, I encourage you to do that. Build, grow, and protect your money, a step-by-step -step guide. Go to indexshow.com, enroll in that class, and I think it will help you to have the right framework for constructing an investment portfolio that is resilient and that does well in any kind of climate. So coming up on the rest of today's program, we're going to talk about a four-step bear market plan, things that you can do right now to prepare ahead. We're also going to talk about some of those inverse ETFs that are designed to go up in value when stock prices decline. And we've seen some very, very good performance uh, from ETFs that do that. So I want to give you some of those ticker symbols and... Uh, see uh, or let you know what's going on there i'm ronda Leggy. this is the index investing show more when we come back be here or be nowhere the index investing show with ronda Leggy. Aerospace and defense ETF soaring? For a bold trade in this sector, trade DFEN, Direction's Daily Aerospace and Defense Bull 3X Shares. Don't miss your next big trade, Direction Leveraged ETFs. 
An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit us at www.directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor, Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Have an investing question for Ron? Call 844-305-7800 or send your questions to at Index Show on Twitter. All right, so the trivia question for today is, and I think it's a rather easy question, maybe too easy. I guess the hurdle is very low here at the Index Investing Show when it comes to trivia questions. So how much did the S&P 500 fall during the last bear market? Does anybody even remember when the last bear market was? I mean, it's been so long. Well, the you got three choices. There's A, 26%. B, 38%, or C, 43%, which is the right answer? How much did the S&P 500 fall during the last bear market? 844-305-7800 is the number if you know the answer. Let us know. Give us your first name along with your city. The winner of today's trivia will get a signed copy of Gents With No Sense, A Closer Look at Wall Street. And um, there you got it. So taking a look at... uh, Markets, we already told you earlier what's going on with some of those key industry sectors and what's that that's telling us. We've got healthcare still doing pretty good. That's uh, by and far one of the best performing sectors thus far in 2018, a hup, up 8.8%. We saw a, a, a big decline in Johnson & Johnson, which is a, a very important component in the healthcare uh, ETF XLV. And that particular stock um, facing some potential liability with some of its uh, consumer products. So that uh, stock took a dive about 9 or 10% on the week. So it's a pretty big move to the downside for J&J. But I want to let you know, and we've talked about this many times on the program, that you don't have to be just an observer watching stock prices slide and not being able to do anything about it. Now, You've got what's called inverse performing ETFs. These are funds that are designed to increase in value when market prices go down. So they're inverse, they're opposite. And you've got three iterations or three categories of inverse performing ETFs. You've got uh, funds without any leverage. That means they aim for 100% daily opposite exposure of whatever index uh, they're linked to then you've got leverage funds which attempt to magnify their performance either 200 percent or 300 percent daily leverage i only recommend the 200 percent and 300 percent daily leverage products in a market that is trending sharply in the same direction that you're trading that's the only time and place for those leveraged ETFs. You do not want to be trading leveraged ETFs in a market that's flat or neutral or moving in the opposite direction in which you're trading. So if you abide by those rules, I think you'll do very well with trading leveraged ETFs. So what is the overall trend right now? Now, it's important to remember in a market correction or even in a bear market, you're going to have you're still going to have rallies. People forget about this. You can have what's called a bear market rally. In other words, a bounce, whether that's, uh, you know, 1%, 5%, sometimes it can be more than that. But the important thing to remember with bear market rallies or even rallies in a market correction is that they are often short-lived and the bigger overall trend is still down. So that's, that's, I think, important because 
my uh, my style of trading is I'd rather stick with the overall bigger picture trend. Now you can try to trade those those short term rallies, those bear market rallies, and get in and get out on a daily basis. Very very difficult to be uh, doing that. You really got to be on it. You really got to be concentrating and focusing. And the minute you lose focus or get distracted or you're not able to make a trade when you need to, I mean, things can go wrong very quickly. So I don't prefer trading bear market rallies, quite frankly. I'd rather trade in the same direction as the bigger overall trend. So in terms of um, certain markets that have gone down substantially in 2018 and, and still may have some upside, there's a couple of ticker symbols if you've got your pens and you've got some paper, or if you've got some, some, um, uh, your notepad open in your mobile device, I'm going to give you a couple of ticker symbols that you absolutely need to, to be on. Uh, ticker symbol TMV, TMV, which aims for triple daily opposite performance to long-term U.S. Treasuries. This has been a good trade since the start of the year. It's ahead by over 13%. Ticker symbol CHAD, CHAD, which aims for 100% daily opposite exposure to Chinese stocks. That one's ahead by over 22% since the start of the year. CHAD is the ticker symbol, and uh, that one has done very well. Uh, of course, Chinese stocks have been in the bear market uh, for all of 2018, and uh, they continue to, to uh, kind of, they haven't really gone down much lately. They're still in a lull and just kind of, hovering near their lows but if that market continues to sink chad should do well and then a couple of specific other areas uh, that uh, you should be aware of ticker symbol edz which plays on that same theme of china edz tracks broader emerging markets of course china is the largest emerging market in the world but edz tracks a basket of different emerging markets not just china but you also have other uh, countries in there like Brazil and India and Russia. So EDZ aims for triple daily opposite performance to emerging markets. It's ahead by 31% since the start of the year. And then ERY is a inverse performing sector ETF. It aims for triple daily opposite performance ERY to energy stocks. That one ahead by uh, over 22%. So you can see we've got some really strong performance happening with uh, with some of these inverse performing ETFs, and you've got the ticker symbols. So watch those particular ETFs. They're, they uh, if this market correction becomes something else, if it morphs into a bear market, you should see some of these particular tickers continue to perform very well and add to their gains. Eight four four three zero five. 7,800 is the number. You're listening to the Index Investing Show. Uh, you can go to indexshow.com. That's uh, our website to listen to our archived podcast. Last week's show, we asked the question, is it time to sell? And if you missed that show, uh, show pick it up there. You can also enroll in my online classes. I encourage you to do that ASAP. Uh, you can enroll in my flagship course which is called Build, Grow, and Protect Your Money, a step-by-step -step guide. And I still see so many people, especially those at or near retirement or in retirement, not protecting their money. They are fully invested. And you know what? They're cruising for a bruising. And so the four-step bear market plan that I'm going to talk about on today's show will help them to get their mind right. That was uh, one of the, my favorite lines in that movie, Cool Hand Luke. Luke, you got to get your mind right. Of course, my Texas accent is not very good. That was the, um, who was that guy? He was the warden, the prison warden. And he had this strong Texas drawl. And he would say to cool, cool Hand Luke, who kept trying to escape from prison, he would escape and he would get caught and he would escape and he would get caught and he would escape and get caught. And every single time he'd get caught, he would he would get a butt licking, right? Just like people, some people are getting a butt licking right now uh, with stocks going down. And he would say, Luke, you got to get your mind right. So I'm going to help you get your mind right. 
and avoid the butt licking. And the way you do that is by having a bear market plan. And you're going to hear in an upcoming episode or upcoming uh, segment a four-step bear market plan. So stay tuned for that. I'm Rhonda Leggy. This is the Index Investing Show. 844-305-7800 is the number. At Index shows my Twitter handle. I'll be right back. Stop investing blindly. Listen to the Index Investing Show with Ron DeLegge every week on iTunes and IndexShow.com. Learn how to grow and protect your money. All right, I want to uh, share an email from a, a listener by the name of Ben, longtime listener to the Index Investing Show. He says this, uh, Ron... I'm not sure of the percentages of people like me who are forced to invest in mutual funds through 401ks, but I think you may want to add a segment that reviews some of the best mutual funds. Just a thought, and I would be happy to discuss further. And he also sent me a list. Thank you, Ben, for that email. He sent me a list of uh, mutual funds that uh, he has picked, his top picks for people with 401k plans. Most of them are Schwab funds, and I have thought about this, Ben, and considered it, but one of the problems is is that most uh, mutual fund or most 401k menus have an array of different mutual fund choices, so it's difficult to really pick and discuss specific families because the, the variety of offerings is so wide and vast and far that it's difficult to extract uh you know one family for example in this case you're recommending schwab uh, mutual funds which i think happen to be very good choices in a 401k plan the problem is is that there's many people that are not able to invest in those funds because they're limited with their 401k menu and they may not have that that flexibility to to buy a schwab mutual funds so that's the shortcoming of dedicating time to that uh, that sort of episode. But I'll give it more thought, or that thought, um, that idea of, of doing a show focusing on mutual funds that uh, that may be best in a 401k setting. Thank you again, Ben, for that email, 844-305-7800. If you'd like to send me a note or question, you can do that on Twitter, at Index Show. You can also send me an email, ron at indexshow.com. So as I told you earlier, every bear market begins the exact same way. It begins with a market correction. And this particular scenario will be the exact same as it has always been. The next bear market, when it does happen, will begin with a market correction. Right now, we're in a market correction. We do not know if it will become a full-blown bear market. But the question is really, are you prepared? What are you doing right now to get yourself ready? Do you have a plan? And so I put together this research piece at ETF Guide called Four-Step Bear Market Plan. And it will help you to be ready. It will help you to be ready. So the first step is to establish an adequate margin of safety. How many times have you heard that on this program? This is something I've consistently discussed over the past several years. Having an adequate margin of safety. And some of you have scoffed at me. Some of you have laughed at me. Some of you have ridiculed me. And this is the one difference between... Ronda Leggy's investment philosophy versus all these other programs and these other shows and these other podcasts is they don't preach this message of having an adequate margin of safety. And that's what differentiates me and this program versus all of them is because they invest without a seatbelt. They invest without an adequate margin of safety because it's not their philosophy. They have a one-dimensional approach that only works in one kind of market. 
a healthy and well-built investment portfolio should have a margin of safety. So remember, your margin of safety represents the capital or money that you absolutely cannot afford to risk to potential catastrophic losses. This money gets set aside from your core and non-core portfolio to be invested in fixed accounts with principal protection, guaranteed income, zero volatility. The prudent investor, and I hope you are prudent, the prudent investor, the discerning investor, the discriminating investor does not wait for a financial meltdown or stock market crash to establish a margin of safety. So I've got a margin of safety worksheet that will help you figure out it for yourself. You can calculate it. Anyone can use it. It's very simple, but it will help you to calculate how much of your portfolio should be earmarked for your own personal margin of safety. That worksheet is available in my online classes. So when you enroll in the online class, not only will you get the class, but you also get that margin of safety worksheet. Indexshow.com is the place to go. Scroll down and click on Ron's online classes, and that'll take you to build, grow, and protect your money step by step. So you'll get that margin of safety worksheet. That is the first step of four steps for your bear market plan. Establish an adequate margin of safety. The next step is to stay liquid and stay disciplined. Keeping cash in your core and non-core portfolio can help you stay liquid. Moreover, cash accomplishes two other crucial objectives. Number one, it cushions your overall portfolio against a sharp decline in stock prices. Number two, it keeps you disciplined and away from disruptive panic behavior that will upset your investment plan. So what is disruptive disruptive panic behavior? Selling at the bottom, right? Selling at the bottom is pretty disruptive. It's pretty panicky. It's also pretty stupid. And yet we see people doing that time and time again because history repeats itself. Human emotion is so predictable. And number three, staying liquid and staying disciplined provides you with the luxury of buying beaten down or deeply discounted stocks and ETFs. Ta-da! In other words, it's a sale. Who doesn't love a sale? Now, the problem with the fully invested portfolio is that you're fully invested. All your capital is spent. And that's why the fully invested portfolio is stupid. It's stupid investment advice. It's bad investment advice. It's neg- negligent investment advice. And anybody that tells you to be fully invested at all times, shame on them. Shame on them. And you know what you should tell them? You should tell them, let you, you should do that with your own money. You be fully invested at all times. So being liquid, being disciplined, having a little bit of cash set aside can help you do that. It can help you take advantage of when market anomalies pop up. And they will. You're going to see some crazy things happen, just like every bear market. Just wonderful investments that get absolutely slaughtered. And so the, the question is, if you've got the, the luxury of being able to be buying those types of assets deeply discounted the next thing is you have to be ready to pull the trigger you have to be ready to dive in you may not catch the very bottom but guess what you don't have to catch the very bottom to make a pretty good uh, profit you just have to be patient and disciplined and again stay liquid and then the other step in our four-step bear market plan is to profit from the fall You can't take advantage of a bear market unless you know what to buy and when to do it. We've already talked on this show about a couple of ideas, inverse ETFs that short the market, that are designed to go up in value when stock prices fall. We even threw in a bond ETF that uh, is designed to profit when bond prices fall. So this is something else. We've got uh, a leveraged inverse and leveraged list uh i'm going to post that on our twitter feed that has all of the etfs neatly categorized by asset class i'll post that on our twitter feed so that you can download that report and have the full list of inverse performing etfs 
by asset class and also by leverage point. Some don't use leverage, others use 200% and 300% daily leverage. So you got to know what those ticker symbols are, and that uh, report available at Index Show on my Twitter feed will give you those ticker symbols. And then finally, the final bear ste- uh, uh, step in a bear market plan. This is the fourth one, and this is the one that will help you understand what exactly is going on with your portfolio is to get graded. Go to PortfolioReportCard.com. If you're still unsure what to do, if you're not sure how much risk you're taking, if you're not sure about what your performance is, go there and get graded, and I will tell you. Well, that does it for another episode of the Index Investing Show. Join us again next week. And until we meet again, may the market indexes be with you. The opinions expressed in this broadcast are not necessarily that of our advertisers, sponsors, or broadcast partners. The discussion of investing is general and should not be construed as investment advice or an offer to buy or sell securities. Listeners are responsible for their own investment decisions and results. Before investing in mutual funds or ETFs, always consult a prospectus for risk, charges, expenses, and other information. Read the prospectus carefully before investing. Past performance is not indicative of future results. No reproduction or dissemination of the index investing shows permitted without the expressed written consent of its producers.